Hello. So, today I've just got to finish off this little bit here, but I thought it would be a good time to show you kind of step by step how I paint and how I use my stencil caps. The very first thing that we have to do, particularly if 98% of our painting is already finished, is cover everything that we don't want to get ruined by drippy paint. To cover it, I use this stuff here. I don't really know what it is. It's a bit like polythene. I found it in a skip. Uh, I found it in a skip at work. I work at an art college. This, I think, belonged to the print room, and I think it's something to do with printing methods from back in the day. Uh, so yeah, if anybody knows what this stuff is, whoop, uh, let me know, because when this runs out, I'm not gonna know where to get more from, uh, because the skip's gone, yeah. So anyway, first thing we do, wrap up with this. Let's get that done, I'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, so now I'm just going to cut out the little bit that we're going to paint today. Uh, let's go. I need to kind of overestimate slightly. He didn't want to go anywhere near that nose again. If that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Um, and top tip. Rather than using the, excuse me, how rude. Rather than using the straight edge, uh, use the, the torn edge. And then if you do get a little bit of overstray, uh, if you do get a little bit of overstray, if you do get a little bit of overspray, then um, it'll kind of be patterny rather than, whew, if that makes sense. Just this little area here, everything else is covered, so any mistakes, whew, it'll be okay. So the next thing I do is decide which angle I'm gonna start painting from, whether it's gonna be sort of straight on, whether it's gonna be upside down, to the side, maybe a little bit diagonal. This is one of the things I love about painting canvas is that you can do this, uh, whereas obviously you can't do that with a wall. It makes it a little bit tricky trying to turn a wall upside down. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna start off at this angle, but we need to be a little bit lower down. Gotta get that ultimate painting position, uh, particularly for the older gentleman who suffers from backache. Yeah, anyway, enough of my problems. Um, let's get on with this bit. So for this bit, I'm gonna use a mixture of mid-gray blue, uh, marble, Black, maybe tar black, uh, lipstick, a uh, little bit of candy, and that should be it, I think. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna give this one a little bit of a clean, because it's mucky and I need it to come out sweet. Your can cleaning kit should comprise of a screwdriver, a pointy pointy thing, and an old rag. Let's take the cap off. Ooh, look at that, lovely. Let's give it a clean over. Should clean right off, I think. Great. I think I have one skinny cap left. So I need to try and conserve my existing stocks. 
Just give it a little rub over so it's clean. Get your rag, stick it into the can. Get your screwdriver and just uh, squeeze it all around. Get that in there so it's clean. Cap back on, quick little test. Good. Pointy, pointy thing. Get it in there. Get it all out, lovely. Do the front. There we go, we're ready to go. Very important, shake your cans, yes. If you don't shake your cans enough, it's spitty, the pressure is just weird, so a good one minute shake at least is what's needed. Uh, it's the most glamorous part of being a uh, kind of painter, because you spend quite a lot of your time doing this. But it's very important. I'm starting off this way because the first lines that I'm gonna do are these kind of horizontally type lines. And it's easier for me to paint sort of straight across like that rather than the canvas being on its side and me having to paint upwards. So we'll do this bit first of all. I'm gonna start with the mid gray um, just to kind of fill in these little blank bits and then we'll get the black in there and start picking out the little lines and then we'll put the marble white over the top for the highlights. The card that I'm using is just a roughly torn bit of card. I kind of have a rough idea of the sort of shapes that I want to make um, but I'm really just kind of tearing them roughly. And I usually have quite a few different bits of card to choose from. I don't like to throw anything away um, and they are all usually a mixture of these kind of roughly torn edges and sharper edges. So the roughly torn bits I do by hand, the sharper edged ones I cut with a Stanley knife. The sharper edge helps things to stand out a little bit more because it makes them look sharper. The rough edges help to make things look a little bit softer and out of focus. So that's really useful when you're trying to do a portrait because obviously you wanna make certain things stand out and certain things blend in a little bit. I do also find that little bits in these roughly torn bits of card will also give me little fine points that will help to build up the painting. So we've got our stencil cap, which fits over the top of our skinny cap, over the top of our can, so that when you spray, the spray comes out through this tiny little hole here. And instead of having a kind of a fan shape, it's a bit more directional. Now there is a sweet spot that you're looking for. And this is why uh, I'll spend quite a bit of time before the paint touches the canvas, just sort of fiddling around with the position of the no nozzle and seeing whether I get any overspray coming out through that hole. So there will be a sweet spot somewhere around about there where we don't get any overspray and then we can start. So it's just very small, slight little marks just kind of building up. all those sort of dark grey areas. Now, like I say, at this stage, I'm not really being too careful about it because I just want to get rid of the white uh, glare of the canvas and get some colour in. I showed this painting to my wife 
last night and it took her about five minutes to work out which bit that I had left to do um, because it looked like I say pretty much complete except for this glaring bit of white canvas that we have here so let's see if we can just get rid of this so I'm doing some fairly thick lines and then I'll just lightly spray over the top of it all to fill in those little gaps. Now let's switch over to the lipstick and we'll get this little bit of the uh, toy finished. Okay, so I'll get to something like this uh, where um, if I go a little bit closer to that black bit with the pink, I'm going to start to get pink on the black. And that's when I will whip the canvas around the other way. And it needs to be a fairly clean edge there. So we'll swap our bit of car for something that's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a crisper edge. So we end up with a nice clean line against the black. So while that's going on, I'll try and show you in a little bit more detail how I work. So the amount of pressure that you put onto this cap obviously controls how much paint comes out through this little hole. So if you push down really hard, really fast, this is going to happen. And we don't want that to happen. No. The less pressure that you can put onto this nozzle, the better. So instead of thinking about using a can of paint like that, you have to think about using it like that. The one thing that I tend to hear a lot when people see my paintings is, you didn't do that with spray paint. Um, and like I say, that's because when people think about spray paint, they think about that kind of graffiti artist, and they think, how the hell can you do something that small? I don't do it the same way as a graffiti artist. I was a graffiti artist, I am a graffiti artist. I love to rock a piece. Uh, but uh, for this, it's a different technique. Slow and steady wins the race. So it does also make a difference where I put my finger on the nozzle. If I put my finger all the way over the top of it, and press down, I will get a line that has a fairly thick consistency of paint in it. If I put my finger right near the back edge of the cap, I tend to get a little bit thinner in terms of the consistency of paint. Whoop, can you see that? Let's go up there. Whoop. So, with my finger fully on it, you get that kind of initial thicker bit of paint whereas putting your finger right at the edge you don't tend to get that, you get a much thinner line. So that combined with using the card I'm able to get different thicknesses of paint which will give me slightly different shades. Look at that! Isn't that pretty? Yeah, nice! So lastly, 
when, you, when you've been using this for a little while, the paint that doesn't go out through the hole has to go somewhere and it ends up in this kind of little well here. So this fills up quite quickly with excess paint and you need to get rid of it. If you're using your can in a kind of variety of different ways, and so you may be kind of just sort of using it on the side there, any excess paint that's in there is going to come out. If you don't cover your painting, it's going to come out and drip down your painting. It's going to go over your cell. Uh, it's going to go over your floor. So you need a way of getting rid of it. And I get rid of mine by just chucking it. Um, I don't just chuck it randomly into midair though. I do have a board here and uh, some covering on the floor, which is where all the paint goes. So that's probably uh, about four or five months worth of uh, different portraits there on that board. Let's check back in with Jeff and see how he's getting on with that painting. Let's get back to the toy and I'm gonna put some tar black in, in those darker areas. So we've got our mid-tone areas and we've got our dark areas done. So now I'm going to get the marble and uh, do some lighter areas. It might not be light enough, I might have to get some white in there as well. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go with the marble white first of all. So up until this point I've been um, quite rough with uh, how things have gone on. But now that I'm starting to get to highlight areas, then I need to start being a little bit finer with my strokes. I hope this has been useful in some way, shape or form to give you a little bit of insight into how I work. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked, please leave a like. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? Um, yeah, I will see you on the next video.